welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. Winter is fast approaching here in the UK and with that in mind I want comfort food. I want delicious, easy, really kind of cosy warming foods. I want to share with you some of my favourite recipes that are really easy to do, packed full of flavour and, and goodness. I'm thrilled to be collaborating with Usher. They have got some amazing products which I have been trying out. So this is a cordless blender. You just charge it with a USB point in here and it's really small, it's really easy and it's just great for whipping up a smoothie, for taking with you on the go. It's got a separate cup that comes with it as well so you can um, you know, just take that with you and you don't have to take that part. So this is a really great product. They have these wonderful sets of bamboo scales. It is so light, it is so beautiful to use. And what I love about it is when you turn it on, you have the unit, so you can choose whether you have it in grams, ounces, but also mil. So when you're weighing liquids, which I do a lot, particularly when I'm baking, for example, when I'm making scones, I weigh out the amount of milk. When you're doing precise baking, you need to weigh your liquid and it has got that function on it. So I'm really thrilled with these scales and they're just beautiful to use. And this great chopping board too. I love having a chopping board that has got a rim around it, particularly when you're chopping, you know, citrus and fruits and things that are liquidy, rather than it running over the edge and making a mess it is collected in this room and you know it, it's been I've been using this a lot recently and I don't have look bad knife marks in it I mustn't put um wooden chopping boards in the dishwasher they are not um not designed to go in the dishwasher you can just rub down a little bit of olive oil onto your wooden chopping boards to look after them but I'm really enjoying using these products I get asked so many questions about meal planning, organisation in the kitchen, batch cooking. I've got an entire week dedicated to it on my Efficient Home course. I've created my weekly meal planner and shopping list. So you've got it all in one place. It's got 52 weeks of the year in here and you can just literally plan out your week. You can write your shopping list you can either tear the page off or you can take the whole book with you it's small enough to fit in your handbag or you might like to shop online you know it depends what our personal preference is but it's really easy to flick back and see a week that has worked if you're really super busy and you don't have time to kind of plan it out I tend to sit down on a Sunday evening and I chat to the family as well and ask them what they would like because it's really important that they're involved um, in the food decision. And then I think actually encourages them to sort of eat more and be more adventurous. So, you know, this is a really good way to just plan out your meals and you're saving money, you're saving waste, you're not having to throw so many things away because you've changed your mind. It honestly is a complete and utter game changer if you just take a little bit of time once a week, once a month, and plan out what you are going to eat. I also got my freezer diary in here because it's really important that you keep track of what is in your freezer. And I love to batch cook. So some of the recipes that I am sharing with you today, for example, the chili, I'm batch cooking that. I'm making a complete cauldron of it so that we can enjoy it, you know, here and now, but I can freeze it in portions and we can enjoy it at a later date. And that's really easy, um, you know, you don't have to think about it. And it saves time when you're in a hurry and you can't sort of cook a home cooked meal from scratch. You can just whip that out of the freezer and know that you're, you're gonna have something good and nutritious. I'm sharing a pasta recipe with you as well, which can be frozen. So that is, you know, another good thing. If you've got leftovers, you can freeze those. And then I'm just sharing with you a really quick and easy gnocchi tray bake. And um, I'm, I'm adding, it's delicious in the summer, but actually I'm adding chorizo, which gives it the sort of warmth and comfort, I think, for the winter. I love chorizo. I cook with it quite a lot. And it's just really easy and you can literally cook it in minutes. I 
are going to take you to see the butcher with me today and a couple of green grocers that I use. These are shops that are really local to me. They're within 10 minutes and I'm using them on a regular basis. I try to shop local as much as I possibly can. I do use a supermarket. I do do an online delivery once a month, you know, the bigger, bulkier items, but um, I just don't want to be lugging around myself. But I do try and shop local and and fresh seasonal produce as much as possible because our bodies are designed to eat like that and so I really want to get kind of the different vitamins and minerals from the different fruit and veg throughout the year into my body and, and the families as well. I love having a smoothie in the winter just to make sure that I've kind of got all my all my goodness and all my veg in me so i'm just going to put uh the kiwi and i really put whatever i have to hand um i don't really follow any kind of particular recipe i've got kiwi here i'm going to add in some banana some spinach and some ginger and i find particularly when i'm really busy I don't necessarily stop for a good lunch, particularly when the children are at school. So that's when a smoothie is really great to have. And this little cordless one is really, really handy, particularly when you're on the go and you can take it, you can take it with you. So if you work in an office or something like that, you can just slip it. It's really light and really easy to use. So, um, super handy. Now you can add in um, milk, plant-based milks, um, you know, almond milk or whatever it takes your fancy or a little bit of yogurt and water. I'm just going to add in some water to mine today. So I filled it about half full with water and literally put the lid on and then press the button. It's got a charging point right here. And as you can hear, it's not really, really noisy, like a Nutribullet or something like that. It's just really convenient. I have found if you use big um, kind of chunks of hard fruit, like some apples and carrots and big pieces, it does slightly struggle with that to so just chop them up or even break them. But it's doing its thing. It does have the separate flask that it comes with, which is really handy. You can just pop it into the fridge or if you've made excess, you can, you know, have the rest another day. But I'm going to enjoy mine from the glass right here. So that is the cordless blender from Usher, and it's just um, a really great little bit of kit. It's so handy, it's so convenient. You can just pop it in your bag and take it with you and make sure that you're having goodness on the go. I love using gnocchi and um, a lot of people get it confused and think it's pasta, it's not, it's actually potato. I have just cooked this, it just needs, needs two minutes and a lot of people eat it um, maybe with pesto and just eat it like, like this. But I wanted to show you how to use it um, in a slightly different way in a tray bake. In my tray bake today, I'm going to be putting mozzarella, some chorizo, because in the winter, I love the warmth that the chorizo gives you. And I find this pre-diced really handy because it saves time. It's got quite a long shelf life too, so you can keep it in the fridge for a little while. I'm just going to use one packet today and I'm just going to fry it while I'm getting the other things ready. You don't need to put any oil in your frying pan. There's enough inside the chorizo already. The chorizo has um, cooked enough, so I'm just going to pop it in with the oil that has been produced whilst it's been cooking. Pop it in there and just mix it through with the gnocchi. Then I've been chopping up mozzarella into chunks. I love mozzarella. And I'm just going to, this is just one ball of mozzarella, just spread that out um, throughout the dish and then some garlic I'm going to use a couple of cloves of garlic just peel them and then crush them I love 
my garlic crusher. I use it every day, it's so handy. And then just add that in, try and sort of sprinkle it around so it's not just in one lump in your dish. Now, I'm going to add some baby spinach. And just sprinkle that over. I'm using a couple of handfuls. And then I've got two cans of tomatoes here. This is the Pizza Express Passata, which I love because it's already flavoured um, with some basil and it's just um, it saves a bit of work. And then just a tin of tomatoes. I'm going to use both of them and just spread those out. So it's so quick. It's so easy to do. And that's what we want. We want easy, good, healthy food that doesn't take hours and hours of preparation. Probably just going to use half of that and just mix it in a bit. Now, basil. <laughs> you must always pinch your basil leaves and be careful of the baby leaves that are growing and coming through. Basil doesn't like to be cut and it also doesn't like to be watered um, onto the leaves itself. So I'm just going to rip up the basil and add that in. A couple of pinches of sea salt and as I am scattering the sea salt I'm just crushing it between my fingers and that helps break up the crystals. And then some black pepper. Now you can use whichever cheese you would like on top. I am going to just put this on here so you can see better. I've got this grated Gruyere, which is in the fridge, left over from something else. And so I'm going to use this, but you could use cheddar, you could use Parmesan, you could use a mixture of cheddar and Parmesan, really whatever takes your fancy. Um, and just scatter a decent amount of cheese on the top there. Just use it all. <laughs> There's no point me putting a tiny bit back in the fridge. And then I'm going to bake this in my Argo, in my roasting oven, for about 20, 25 minutes until it's golden brown on top. So if you're using an electric Argo, electric Argo, an electric oven, you would use, um, use it on about 180 to 200 um, degrees centigrade. And here is my gnocchi tray bake. It's so easy, so delicious. I cannot wait to enjoy this for lunch. A great recipe for all the family in the winter is roasted butternut with an orzo pasta. We always have this debate in our family whether it's rice or pasta, but it really is pasta. So I have just peeled with a vegetable peeler butternut squash and I'm going to chop it up into chunks and roast it with some sage. I just love, wish you could smell this, but love the smell of sage. I've just literally picked this from the kitchen garden right now. Rather than um, faffing around with taking the seeds out, I literally just chop, chop them out like that. And it makes it so much easier. And I'll do the same here. And then you can keep those seeds and you can dry them and you can use them um, to plant your own. I'm chopping mine into quite quite small chunks, but really it um, it's totally you know personal preference. But I find if I cut them up relatively small, the children are more likely to eat them than if I was to give them big hunks of butternut. You can use um, pumpkin, you can use really whatever takes your fancy. Um, I just love using seasonal veg where possible. 
So I've got my chunks cut up. I'm just going to sprinkle over some sage leaves. I'm using this cold press extra virgin olive oil, about a tablespoon just drizzled over. And then a good pinch of sea salt and some black pepper. Roast in the oven for about 30 minutes. Turn it maybe halfway through just so it's cooking evenly throughout. Oh, that schlot really was the worst. I haven't, um, <laughs> I haven't felt like that chopping an onion or a schlot for a very long time. Anyway, I finally chop a shallot and a stick of celery. I'm just going to turn my butternut squash that's in the arger. So if you don't have an arger, that's actually almost ready. If you don't have an arger, put it in at about 120, um, 120. Oh my, that, that onion's got to be not 120, 180 degrees centigrade. I'm actually just going to put it in the warming oven until I'm ready because it's done. A couple of cloves of garlic and you'll notice I'm keeping my piles separately. You want to cook your garlic after you've started to soften your shallot and um, celery because garlic can burn quite easily. So you just want to put that in towards the end, just peel it and then you can either crush it, in fact, I will show you uh, a couple of different options. If you haven't got a garlic crusher, like my one, I highly recommend them because they're completely fabulous. I'm struggling to peel this one. Um, then you can just use a knife and a flat of your hand and crush it like that and then slice it up finely or you can just put it in in the mincer like I do. I personally don't like having big hunks of garlic in my food so I like it um, minced up in this. It just makes it um, into really nice small little small little pieces and really easy to use. And then I'm just going to chop these um, sage leaves up quite finely. These we're going to add in with our pasta. So I have got a large um, skillet with that has a lid as well, which is quite handy when you're doing a recipe like this. I'm going to use um, about a tablespoon of olive oil and just heat that up and then add in um, the schlot. When you've heated up your pan, add in your chopped shallot. You'll notice that I'm using the back of my knife, not the sharp side. And actually, if you use that side and push, you blunt your knife. So it's always a good idea to turn it upside down. I learned that in chef school. And then add in your celery as well. Once it's started to soften, Add in the sage. And I'm going to season at this point. I'm going to be quite generous with my seasoning, with my salt and pepper. Garlic. 
I'm literally going to let that cook for about 30 seconds before I add in my vegetable stock. I have got a litre of vegetable stock here. It's best if you can make your own, but if you can't, then a vegetable stock cube will suffice. And I'm just going to add that in now. You want it to get quite hot. You want it to be boiling. So I'm going to add my lid now and just bring that up to the boil. When it's boiling, you can add in your pasta. Now you want to cook this until it's al dente. So I'm going to set Alexa for eight minutes. And you want to stir it because that releases the starch and it makes it much creamier and it's a really lovely consistency. And this really is like a cheats risotto. It's so much easier and quicker to do. You just need to stir it from time to time. You may need to add a little bit more stock, so just keep an eye on it. But make sure you stir from time to time. You can see it's just absorbing the water and just becoming a wonderful consistency. Alexa has just gone off and you can see that this has absorbed all of my stock. It is a wonderful consistency. It's really similar to risotto, but you don't need to stand there for hours and stir yeah, and literally in eight minutes it's done. Alexa thinks I'm still talking to you. <laughs> I've got two handfuls of parmesan here, which I am just adding in and then stirring that through. And then I'm going to serve it just like this with the chunks of butternut on top. And it's just a wonderful, warming, comfort food for these wintry days. And you can freeze it as well, which is even better. So if you make excess, you can pop it into a container, freeze it, and then you've got a meal that you can enjoy really quickly. I wouldn't freeze it with the butternut that's being cooked. I would just freeze the pasta like this and then, um, and then reheat it um, when, when you're ready to enjoy it another time. This is one of those wonderful dishes that you can add in all sorts of things. So if you have got, you know, spinach to hand, you could add that in. If you've got kale, you could also add that in too. You know, really, whatever you have got, um, use up. And as I mentioned earlier, you could use pumpkin instead of butternut squash or, um, you know, just an assortment of roasted vegetables would work really well too. I'm not going to put any additional parmesan on the top because it's got quite a lot inside already. But look, a delicious, really quick and easy lunch or supper for the family to enjoy. I have got my Le Creuset, my cauldron as I call it, and I'm going to make a big vat of chilli. Chilli is just one of those wonderful things to have in the freezer, it's so versatile. You can have it with rice, you can have it with jacket potato, you can even throw it on pasta, you can have it with nachos, you can have it in a tortilla wrap. There are so many different options and I just love to have some to hand um, for you know hungry children and it's just something super quick and super easy. And if you're going to the effort of making some, then you may as well make enough to kind of go around and to freeze. So I'm using five pounds of mince from my lovely butcher. And I'm just gonna heat up a little bit of olive oil into my Le Creuset and then fry off the onions to start with. So first up, I'm going to add in these chopped onions. And again, making sure that the knife is upside down so you don't blunt it when you're scraping in. I'm now going to add in my celery and red peppers. have softened they've had about five minutes and I'm just going to season now so sea salt 
black pepper. Now I am completely and utterly cheating. This is my friend Pollyanna's chiliish. And rather than chopping up a chili, I am using some of this. I'm going to use, just gonna mix it. There's sort of the gubbins at the bottom and then the chili oil. I'm gonna use a dessert spoon of the chiliish. If you want it stronger, then obviously add more or use um, one chili chopped up finely. Half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. It's going to be quite difficult to get out, but there. And then one teaspoon of oregano. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And one teaspoon of cumin. Let those cook for um, 30 minutes until you can really start to smell those spices and it's really fragrant. Because I want to pack as much goodness into my family as possible, I'm adding in some grated carrot, just two carrots, just grated finely and just mix those through. I've just turned up the heat and I'm going to brown off the mince now. So literally in, in one go, <laughs> big lump, and just break it up and watch it change colour. You want it to be browned all over. I just realised I didn't add the garlic in, but that doesn't matter. I can pop it in now. My meat is almost all browned, which is great. give it a final stir through and I'm just going to reduce the temperature to add in the final bits. So in go the kidney beans, a few bay leaves, 150 ml of red wine. You can use stock instead of red wine if you prefer. The red wine just adds a richness which I think is really lovely two tins of chopped tomatoes i'm going to add a little bit of water just to rinse these out and that will um add in into there too literally just swirl the water around my tin and then you're cleaning it you're not wasting anything and it can do with a little bit more liquid so just uh that in. See our cauldron is getting quite full now. Earlier I used half a tin of the tomato passata and rather than wasting it I'm adding that in as well now. That is it. I'm going to put the lid on, bring it up to the boil and then I'm going to let it simmer for at least an hour. One of the joys of having an auger is I can literally just put that chilli into the simmering oven and leave it there for a good couple of hours, let it do its thing and I'm not wasting um, heat coming out by doing it on the top. So if you obviously don't have an auger then just let it simmer as you would, would do normally for a minimum of an hour, just on a really low heat. Keep the lid on because you want to keep all of those flavours and juices in there. You don't want it to evaporate down at this stage at all. If it needs to evaporate, you know, in the last sort of 10, 15 minutes, you can take the lid off if you've got too much liquid. But at this stage, you want to keep the lid on.
thank you so much for joining me in the kitchen today. I really hope that you've enjoyed the recipes that I'm sharing with you. For more information about the recipes um, and the recipe details, do head over to my website, askcharlie.how. And thank you for tuning in, wishing you a super weekend and week ahead. Please do remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comments below. It helps others find me, so I'd be really grateful of that. Anyway, lots of love and see you again next week.